This is conjunction introduction. And we'll abbreviate conjunction introduction simply by using wedge, the sign for wedge, and an I. So conjunction introduction is a derivation rule that says if you have two formulas, two lines of a proof, two formulas within the proof that you're working with, let's call one P and the other Q, but P and Q can be formulas of any complexity as long as they're well formed. Well, if we have two formulas, we can derive, we can reason to, we can infer the conjunction of these two formulas. That is, we can reason from P and Q to the complex, well-formed formula P wedge Q or P and Q. In addition, we'll say, well, you can also reason from P and Q to Q and P. Now, a way to express this more compactly is as follows. We'll say from P and Q, these syntactically entail P and Q, and we'll justify this step in a proof using this wedge I. And from P and Q, you can reason to P wedge Q, or P and Q for short. The idea here is that we can reason from two separate well-formed formulas to the conjunction, to a single well-formed formula that is a conjunction. This corresponds to everyday reasoning. So imagine take a proposition, John is a man. Let's say we accept this is true. And we also accept that John is a banker. Well, conjunction introduction would correspond to the reasoning that people make use of where you combine these two into one complex sentence, one complex conjunction, which is, John is a man and a banker. Now this seems pretty trivial, but we would say, okay, this looks like John is a man, and then the separate sentence, John is a baker, this would entail John is a man and a baker as well. In the sort of setup that we make use of for solving proofs, we have a we write down our premises. Premise one is just the proposition or well formed formula P. Premise two is Q, and it's also justified as a premise. And then when we derive a new formula into the proof at line three, we're deriving the conjunction of line one, which is a well-formed formula, and line two, which is a well-formed formula. And we're deriving P wedge Q. Now to, to indicate that this is how we got here, because we want to indicate if someone looks at our proof, say, hey, how did you come up with line three? We'll indicate one, the justification, which is we made use of a specific rule within the deductive apparatus, which is conjunction introduction. And so we'll indicate, rather than write out conjunction and introduction, we'll write wedge I, and people will say, oh, that wedge stands for conjunction, that I stands for introduction, so I know what rule you're referring to. But then we want to make clear which formulas we made use of to derive this conjunction. And the formulas that we made use of were line one and line two. So we reason from P at line one and Q at line two to the complex conjunction at line three, P wedge Q. Now let's look at a more complicated example. So conjunction introduction simply states that from two different formulas or propositions or sentences, we can derive the conjunction of these propositions. So let's look at the really kind of ugly looking proof or entailment, P, P right arrow Q, R V M Z. And that entails this complex conjunction where the left conjunct is P right arrow Q and the right conjunct is R V M. So we'd start by setting up the proof. We'd say, okay, we're gonna write the premises that we're reasoning from, the formulas that we're reasoning from. We're just gonna plop those down and indicate where do they came from. They are premises. These are formulas that are provided for us. They're given to us. We're just accepting these as true. And so we're gonna indicate it as such with a P. Now, what we want to reason to is this complex conjunction to the right of the single turnstile. That is, we want to reason to if P then Q and R or M. Now, if you look at this, you look at line one and you look at line two. Those are two separate formulas. Now, conjunction introduction says you can reason to a conjunction, you can introduce into the proof a conjunction, provided you have two separate formulas to combine. And so what we can do is take line one and line two and derive the conjunction of those two. We could say one formula one is the case and formula two is the case. And so that's what we do here. We write if P then Q and R or M. 
And so we're taking line one and line two and reasoning to the conjunction. Now again, we're indicating one, where we got, what rule we made use of, which is conjunction introduction, and then also what lines we made use of. We didn't make use of line three, that is Z. Z, Z is not a formula that we took and kind of combined it into the conjunction. Instead, we took line one and line two and combined them to derive the complex conjunction if P then Q and R or M.